Joseph Casey, tonight's topic is managing up. It assumes you have a boss. If you're still in school, you have a professor, or if you're still in high school or something, you have parents. Okay, so there's a couple things. First, your relationship with your boss is super important, and so it's worth investing in. Yes, cheers. Um, It's worth investing in, and it's going to take some time there. It's like any, we've talked about networking here before. Any relationship, you're going to have to put some time in. It's not free. Uh, Yuckers, we'll add a command for it. I'm not going to go over the whole recipe again, but it's uh, pineapple bourbon lemonade. Um, So uh, you're going to have to put in the time to build a relationship there and understand your boss. And this is a long-term project. It's not... I will talk about how to manage up and you can apply some of this tomorrow, but it is most effective if you've built some sort of relationship with your boss. Now, it also works with other people. Everything I'm going to talk about here works with other people. It just works better or it's tuned at your manager. Um, And Captain Turtle says, hard work and commitment. Yes, thank you. You're like inside my brain. It's a free prompt. Uh, I'm always talking about here how you have to do your job well if you want to be successful. Um, and uh, if you, and uh, CEO of Mixer, I'm going to stop talking to chat here for a second to get through the points before we take questions, but everyone has some kind of boss, believe me. Even uh, CEOs have boards and other people they manage up to. And if you have more questions, uh, you can put them into our extension. I'll get back to them. Um, so look, uh, first thing to be able to manage up well is don't be a problem child. If your performance sucks, if you're late, if you're cantankerous, if your work quality is poor, uh, if you're unreliable, you're going to have trouble managing up well because your boss starts with a presumption that you are a troublemaker, that you are a pain point, that you need to be managed, that you are a problem. And so get yourself out of the problem category. Now, some people will say, well, the whole problem is uh, my boss is out of touch or disconnected or impossible to please. So how can I be seen as doing my job well when they're so unreasonable? We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh most problems, you are at least part of them. I'll tell a funny story. Years ago, and I don't know if this is true anymore, but I was reading about China. And apparently in China at the time, in auto accidents, they never assigned 100% of the blame to any one party. So there was a guy like stopped at a stoplight and he got rear-ended. And they, they, he was a tourist. And uh, he ended up in court and they said he was 10 percent responsible for the for the accident. And he said, how can that possibly be? I was completely stopped in my lane like and the other guy just ran into me. And the court apparently said, well, if you hadn't come to China, you wouldn't have gotten a hit, would you? So. That's an unreasonable example, but the point is, we all have some part in how we're perceived. Um, And yes, China is a popular topic right now. Yeah, Dome Kang, I'm unaware. So people in chat, help me out. Every time somebody's unaware of what managing up is, go ahead and give them the rundown um, so that I can stop repeating it um, because they need a boss. All right. (laughs) And I... uh, uh, We'll see how responsible China is for the coronavirus later. Um, So do your job well. And then here's the key point. We'll come back to this your responsibility part in a minute. But every manager, me, everyone else, we have a style. And it's important you understand that your style and how you like to work and your boss's style may differ. If you don't follow that, you can go see the video we've already done, I did with Devin, on personality tests. Different personalities, okay, if you have one personality and your boss has a different personality, 
you're going to have stylistic differences. And that doesn't mean your boss is bad or you're bad. It does mean that the two of you are going to have to adjust to each other to have the best working relationship. Now, I'm going to switch over um, and talk about how you can magically figure this all out. There's a plugin for LinkedIn, works only on Chrome, and it's this thing called Crystal. Uh, and the way Crystal works is you can read, um, it can read someone's uh, LinkedIn profile and pull up and actually from the words they've written and the way they've written about themselves, tell you where they are on the disc personality profile and how they act so like this guy is more risk tolerant and he's more skeptical um, i have run it on devon i have uh, i'm using firefox here so i don't have it plugged in on uh, chrome but as it says you can go try it on devon nash or anybody else you can try it on me um and so this plugin crystal will tell you about the personality of the person you're uh, talking about. And you can run it on your boss or coworkers. And you can run it on me. Um, I've seen it run on dozens of people at this point, And it's very accurate. It's not perfect, but it's very accurate. Uh, and so, uh, and for some people, after they look at it, they come back and they're like, holy shit. Um, it's uh, incredibly accurate. And I see Josie Toxic here. I haven't seen you in a long time, Josie. Good to hear from you. Um, uh, it's She's obviously run it or been told about it um, through mutual friends, I think. It's incredibly, it's like scary accurate. Um, and uh, yeah, my crystal profile. My crystal profile is sadly accurate. Who made crystal? It's some little company. Um, uh, it's, it's, I think they're going to get bought for a ton. Hey, Hephaestus, good to see you. Um, I think they're going to get bought actually for a ton of money and make crazy bank out of it is, is my opinion. Uh, I think it's going to go incredibly well for them. So anyway, with your boss and yeah, Hephaestus, I sold him on this. He said it basically doubled the response rate. So you have someone in chat who can give you a first person testimonial for how accurate Crystal is. Um, and uh, oh, I guess Josie can too. The key about Crystal, this is important, chat. It's free. The first 10 uses are free. Yes, you have to pay eventually, but you can check out your boss and all the people that you work with the most for free. And once you have their profiles, you can keep reloading those specific profiles indefinitely for free. Um, and ha 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 ha. Oh, Racine, that sucks. Uh, Racine works at a lockdown workplace where they won't let her plug anything in. That's ridiculous. Uh, so that's, that's I don't know. I don't even know what to say about that. Well, I do. Get out. And she knows that. She's working on it. So bottom line is you can use this, though. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of this, but it can actually tell you um, what to say to people in conversations, like how to adjust to them. It can also coach you through, this is all how it works, blah, blah, blah. It can coach you through how to interact with them for specific goals, like resolving a conflict. Um, and so anyway, this Crystal plugin is basically magical. Um, and so going back to managing up well, you have no excuse the other thing it does is it will profile you. If you have a LinkedIn profile, which if you watch this show and listen to my endless rants about networking or Devin, since a bunch of you came over from Devin and welcome in. Um, if you listen to either of us, you know you have to have a LinkedIn profile in order to have a good network. And this will get you, uh, then it will tell you how a personality like yours should work with a personality like the target person. So at some level, if my mic wasn't attached to a stand, I could mic drop and say, okay, managing up, done, I'm out, let's drink. But I will go into a few more details just to humor you. 
So anyway, use Crystal, figure out your boss. And if your boss doesn't have a LinkedIn profile, there are ways to do this the hard way. Um, but it takes more time. Um, the point is, though, every manager has a style. Some managers like a lot of details. Some managers hate a lot of details. They want you to get right to the point. They want to save time. Some managers want to see a lot of reports and documentation and proof that you know what the hell you're talking about. Some managers only want to be interrupted when there's a problem or never. You need to know their style. And once you know their style, the point is you need to tailor your interactions to their style. Now, point of order, why do you have to be the one to change? Well, good news, you don't except you only control you. So the way I view my role as a manager is it's my job to adapt to the styles of the people who work for me. But I don't always succeed, and sometimes I'm tired or grouchy or whatever, and I don't feel like doing it, or I'm not even thinking about it. And so you can ask your manager to adapt to your style. I've had employees say, look, I don't uh, like it when you pop in. Can you always schedule with me? Or um, I find how much uh, you question me, it threatens me and makes me feel like you don't trust me. What can we do about that? So I've told them, look, send me enough data without me asking. Like send me regular updates. I promise I will never come ask you. Um, it's a good question. What is Bezos personality thingy? I don't know. Um, I have to think about that. Maybe I'll, I'll talk about it later. Um, Bezos is pretty results oriented. Uh, the way to figure out Bezos uh, personality would be to look at the Amazon leadership principles, which are very results oriented, which probably means he's a D on the disc, but hard to know for sure. Hmm. Pineapple bourbon lemonade drink of the week. Okay. So, Managers have a lot of things in common you can expect, though, right? They're usually busy um, or think they're busy. You can say they, they're not busy, but they think they are. They're worried about a lot of things, peers, budgets, timelines, and they don't like surprises, um, particularly about things that worry them. Um, uh, yep. So, and Kristen, who's a new manager, says, uh, love when people share the info you actually need to know when giving a simple update. Yes. If you give updates, proactivity generally helps managers unless you're writing them huge books. Like I tend to write very lengthy updates and my boss, I had to start putting TLDR at the top and getting it down to a tweet and then giving him the details if he wanted because he'd get all my detail and was like, yeah, whatever. Um, so you have to learn their style. And so at this point, we get to the first rant. Who's ready for the rant? Maybe I'll drink some water while I find out. So somebody is going to say, look, isn't all this managing up just sucking up? And so let's talk about the difference between sucking up and managing up. Because there are suck ups in the world and the two have some relation. I'm not going to bullshit you. But the key difference is Managing up is trying to help both you and the boss get better work done more smoothly and be more effective. Sucking up is trying to manipulate, usually aimed at your coworkers, but it's dishonest or can be, and it has the intention not of improving the relationship, but of controlling it. So I don't respect suck ups any more than any of you probably respect suck ups. And uh, even if you say that you respect suck ups, you don't. You're just saying that. So look, the rant here is don't be a suck up and don't confuse learning to work with other people in a better way with being a kiss ass or being manipulative. OK, you can learn social skill and be skillful at meeting another person's communication needs without being a jerk and without trying to manipulate them. So that's rant number one. There might be a rant number two later, but rant number one is managing up and sucking up are different. Um, <clears throat> all right, uh, let's see. 
Last couple things, then we'll go to questions. Don't put your boss on the spot in public. Um, uh, don't put your boss, um, like, unless you have a relationship where you can politely call something out in public, everyone, uh, you, this is good advice. I said this is for everyone. You generally shouldn't correct peers or anyone else in public uh, if you can at all possibly avoid it. Pull them aside later, give them feedback, or find the gentlest possible way. Because if you corner your boss into a power struggle in public, they're going to feel threatened because feelings trump thinking, and they're going to assert, assert themselves even in the face of logic in order to maintain position. And that's human nature. Uh, what was it? Uh, there's this great essay, I don't have it pulled up, about status-seeking monkeys and how all humans are status-seeking monkeys and we all act like status-seeking monkeys. Oh, and I appreciate, by the way, I see a lot of people are following. Uh, I appreciate all the people coming in and following the stream. Uh, it's good to have you. You'll get a lot out of it, I hope. Um, so thank you for the follows. Um, so yeah, there's a funny essay. You can go look it up. I think if you just Google status seeking monkeys, I'll go take a look real quick. You'll find it. Um, but you don't want to be that. Uh, but we all are. Um, and so understand your boss uh, is a status seeking monkey as well. Where is this? People are status seeking monkeys. Yeah, it's. I think it's by a guy called Eugene Way, but um, uh, that might be. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's us. Whether Eugene Way is the guy or not, um, I think he's the one who wrote the article. But that's a quick guess. All right. Last point, and then we'll go to questions. What about unreasonable managers? So. This is where we get into story hour for a minute, which is another tradition. Um, understand that everyone tries to have a reason. They all have a reason in their own mind. We've always talked about on this channel, people are the heroes of their own narrative. And their narrative is never, I'm a bad boss, uh, or very rarely. And it's never, I'm an evil, uh, controlling dictator, ranting fool. They have some narrative in their head why what they do and how they think is completely appropriate. So when you think you have an unreasonable manager, what you probably have is someone whose style is very different than yours. You may have a jerk. You may just have someone uh, that you're incompatible with. Okay, So just like dating, um, it may just be you're not a match. It doesn't mean the other person is horrible. They might be. They might not be. So the first thing to try and do is figure out what um, their line of reasoning is. So, uh, for example, I've had a couple bosses or seen a couple bosses that mostly think about how are they going to, how is whatever you're telling them going to impact their boss? So they're instantly managing up. And this actually drove me crazy with one guy I work for. Because the only feedback I and I saw other people, it wasn't just me, the only feedback anybody got from him was, well, so-and-so, our boss above us, or Jeff Bezos, our further up boss, what is Jeff going to say? Or I think Jeff is going to say blah, blah, blah. And it drove us nuts. Um, yeah, so uh, someday I'll uh, turn on BTTV. I haven't done it yet. It's kind of on the to-do list, but we're not there yet. So be patient or don't, but it will get there. Because God knows a stream about career needs more memes. That's completely what it needs. No, we'll turn on. I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, <clears throat> so uh, understand what their line of reasoning is. And this guy, his reasoning was, well, what? what I, the best thing I can do for you is help you be successful with Bezos. Um, so that's the best thing I can do for you. And so he had a line of reasoning and he also hated it when those people criticized him. So he was trying to avoid criticism. 
So understanding his reasoning then let me decide how to interact with him. Like at least I knew what I was going to get. Um, and so that's adopting to his style. Now, if you have a truly unreasonable manager who's just crazy, I've covered that before. 70% of people leave jobs because of their manager. That's going to be you. If you're completely incompatible with your boss, you can't figure out their reasoning, you can't succeed with them, you can't understand their style using Crystal, you can't adapt to them, then you're going to suck at managing up. But if you do your job well and you learn their communication style and you actually ask, by the way, the great question, here's the money for this episode. Ask your boss, I want to help you be successful. How can I best communicate with you? And then stop and listen. What sort of work style works best for you? And then stop and listen. What could I do better to make it easy for us to work together. Then listen and do that. These are not hard questions. You know how often I'm asked these? Basically never. And we have Hephaestus here. We have lots of managers in chat. You can ask them how often they're, they're asked. If Devin's still around, he can chime in with how often he's asked because I love to call him out and make him come back to chat. Um, but... Hephaestus is here. Kristen is here. Yeah, Hephaestus one time ever. Sean, one, two, three, zero. So think about that. You have managers in chat. Sean, Sean has 30, 40 employees. Uh, Hephaestus has a dozen. Kristen's new. She's only got about half a dozen, I think. They've never been asked this. I have hundreds of employees. I'm extremely, yeah, uh, Sean has 500 directly and indirectly, but dozens directly. No one's asking, which means you're all either miracle mind readers and have great relationships with us, or you can ask a simple question. So, <laughs> um, is it worth asking these questions when you work for minimum wage? I don't know. Um, I think it is. You still have a boss, and that boss still has control over your life. And they can still make your life either better or worse. And they can actually have some influence on getting you paid more than minimum wage. So, look, humans are humans, um, no matter what your workplace is. Now, I mostly am talking about the professional workplace. Um, but I think uh, it applies in almost any workplace. Because where are you not going to be happier uh, if you don't, um, uh, if you have a better relationship with your boss, you're going to be happier. And so I think it's everywhere. So, APUG, the question, there's several variations. It's basically, how can I work with you? What makes it easier for you? What communication style do you like? What could I do to communicate better or to work better with you? And nobody does it. And Josie Toxic clipped it. So, Josie, you can ship that. Uh, we have links turned off, but you can ship it over to uh, 40 Pink Dragons and she can point, uh, post the clip link. All right. And so with that, I'm done. Um, I have another rant for later. I have some stories. Oh, I'm not done. So earlier today, I was talking to our other moderator, um, Shadow Fox. And uh, she's been reading a book I recommend all the time. You've all heard this from me before. But for those who are new, this is one of my top two book recommendations. So let's bring it up. And it's leadership and self-deception, specifically this idea of getting out of the box. And the point of this book is how what we do, um, how we think, we poison our thoughts to make ourselves the heroes of our thoughts and we don't realize that the way we communicate loads our communication with emotion that causes the other person to react badly. So that's a lot of complicated words. Let me illustrate. Because Shadow Fox pulled something brilliant out of this book that I hadn't caught. In the book, they talk about this story. Um, thank you, Wicked. Buy the book. Buy it now. And uh, 
We'll even put up our book list so you can buy it from us. So there you go. All right. And Josie, thanks for clipping. I tried to make that clippable by like banging it out and not getting distracted by chat. So um, this book tells a story of how we, rea we react. And it tells the story of people, if you've ever flown Southwest, um, but any airline where it's open seating, or even if you just get on and you have an empty seat next to you, the first thing you think is, God, I hope no one sits there. Now, why do you think that? You want an empty seat. It's nice. It's convenient. But when the next person's walking down the aisle, what are you thinking? And this happens on buses and trains, too. So it's not just, um, it's not just uh, airplanes. But we're all thinking, don't sit next to me. You might be fat. You might be smelly. You might be loud. You might be something I don't like. You might be pushing on my seat or a, a leany person or a snoring person or have a dog. I want this seat for me. But here's the thing. What are we thinking about? We're thinking about what we want. What we're not thinking about, we have no empathy for, is the person who just got on the train, plane, or bus needs a seat. Further, it's not actually our seat. Like we have a seat. We want somebody else's seat. Now I get it. I am the first one to want that middle seat on the airplane because I'm usually in the aisle and somebody else takes the window. I am praying for that middle seat to be empty. But it actually turns me into a possessive dick. And the point of leadership and self-deception is we all have these subconscious wants, but they make us treat others badly. And so when the person comes down the aisle, we're either doing this and not looking at them or kind of scowling at them and hoping they move on. You can do this with your boss, too. If you're wrapped up in what you want, like, oh, boss, um, I finished this report. I think it's great here. And what you really have in mind is I half asked this, but I want to go home. So say, OK, that will come through. Because we're not actually thinking, what report does the boss need to get his job done or for me to have done good work? We're thinking, say yes so I can get the hell out of here. That comes through the relationship. So, yeah. Dos Meeps has this one right. Thank you for chiming in. Remember, guys, everyone is just like you. Is the stream really at an end? No, the stream is not at an end. The stream has barely begun. Well, it's half over maybe. All right. So get a copy of Leadership and Self-Deception. Um, so look, that's awesome. It's now question time. We need to go into questions and answers. Um, oh, I know why you thought that, because I said I'm done. I just meant I was done with the, the, the open up. So we have lots of questions in here. I'm going to take the first one. We'll jump into those. The first question is, how many levels should you manage up ideally? And how to overcome the fear of the distance in levels? Ah, oh, my other top book, my other top book, as Kristen just said, is decisive. So I've decided if I had to rank, I will answer this question in a second. If I had to rank my top two books, I would rank decisive first. And the reason is not because it's better than leadership and self-deception, but because it's a lot easier to apply. Leadership and self-deception takes all this introspection and learning about yourself Um decisive does not decisive is a simple recipe and it's a fun read so if you've never read anything and leadership and self-deception doesn't sound like your cup of tea read decisive if you want to work on how to manage up or to be more effective in the workplace leadership and self-deception is better so those are your two choices and then there's a whole other list of good books too all right, I think you guys may have tripped on my other rant for the night with this question. So I was going to hold it for later, but now we'll have to bring it out in just a second. So yes, we'll do that, but we're going to answer a little bit of this question before we start the rant. So the question, how many levels up should you manage ideally? That's part one. Whoever put this in decided they were going to get themselves a twofer and ask two questions. We're going to answer part one and then rant about part two because part two needs a rant. All right, how many levels should you manage up ideally? One or two, 
beyond that, nobody knows your name and they're going to be like, who the hell are you and why are you talking to me directly? And it's not arrogance or whatever. It's they just won't understand. They won't have met you. They won't understand why you're not talking to your manager or your manager's manager. So people like Jeff Bezos, they get contacts um, from many levels down in the organization. They just don't have time for it. And they also don't have context. So you're basically only managing your boss and you're maybe your boss's boss. Beyond that, you're so far out of context that you're probably not going to be effective. That's my opinion anyway. So um, what's worth saying here? Um, I think I answered how many levels to manage up. And so let's get into the how to overcome the fear of the distance and levels. <sighs> Bosses are scary. I've learned this the hard way. I did a whole talk inside Twitch once where I did, I before I started this stream, I pioneered it inside Twitch. I went to the employees at Twitch and I said, I'll do a stream about anything you guys want to hear about. What do you want to know? And they said, teach us how to talk to executives. And what I found out in that by the questions I was asked is apparently I'm scary as hell. And it's really funny to me. I'm sorry, by the way. I don't intend to be scary. Um, but then I go on Devin's channel and we do a show and I get the nickname The Assassin uh, or something like it because I give direct feedback and um i'm loud and i'm tall and i'm directly spoken and i don't know lots of things i'm in charge if i'm in a managerial position so i get it um i get why a lot of people would find me scary i just i'm not trying to be scary i'm trying to get stuff done and in my head i have a big to-do list and a lot of uh, impatience in my style. If you use the Crystal plugin and look me up on LinkedIn, you'll find that I'm very quick to reach conclusions, sometimes wrong ones, by the way. It's not saying I'm good at it, it's a flaw, but I jump to conclusions and I move quickly and I'm very action oriented. Well, the result is to people I seem impatient and scary. And I'm like, could you bottom line that? I only have two minutes here. What's the point? I don't mean to do that. Most bosses are not. There are exceptions. And some of you will immediately tell me there are exceptions. But most bosses are not trying to be intimidating. That's not their goal. At least not most of the time. Now, there are bosses that are intentionally domineering or trying to be scary. They're insecure and they feel like they have to threaten and cow people because questions frighten them. They have a type of imposter syndrome and they're terrified that if someone asks them a question and they don't know, either their boss will figure out they're actually an idiot or they'll lose control. But the real truth is um, most managers are not trying to be scary. That said, here's a few ways to overcome the fear. Number one, there's a book completely about this. Kristen has called out one from Turn the Ship Around. Uh, but another one we talk about all the time on this channel is Jia Jiang and um, uh, Rejection Proof. So let me see if I can find it real quick and show it off. This book, if you're scared of people and scared of stuff and you want to be less scared, uh, this book is funny and super interesting how you can check it out. So, uh, Jia Jiang, Rejection Proof, How I Beat Fear and Became Invincible Through 100 Days of Rejection. So that that book will, and he did it all in places like um, uh, a donut shop. So uh, he did not test this. Uh, in in places where you need to worry about it, like where you're going to get fired. So you can go read that. Um, but the rant here is bosses aren't trying to be scary. Sometimes we are. What do you do about it? Be confident. OK, great. Thank you. That's not helpful. Be prepared. Know our style 
And don't, if you can avoid it, if it's not an emergency or a um, something that you have to interrupt, ask, is this a good time? Is this a time when you have time for this? I have a short question. Should I schedule? What should I do? Um, and yeah, I see a lot of you are checking out Jia Jiang. It's really cool. I read his whole book or I listened to it on Audible. I do a lot of Audible. It's good. And he's clever and he's funny. Um, and of course, now he's made a whole career out of that book. Um, you know, he tanked his startup and did that instead. And he also has a good case study. I know a lot of you are talking about how to get jobs. His last rejection challenge was trying to get his job, uh, his wife, a job at Google and his quest for how to do that. So I'm always doing case studies of how to get a job. There's a free case study of how to get a job in the end of the book. So if people find anyone scary, it's logical to think about why and learn to give them a different approach like tonality and or wording. Exactly. The other thing you can do, you can use the Zelda approach. It's dangerous. Don't go alone. Um, take an ally with you, take a coworker, uh, take a peer, um, take someone who knows the boss and don't throw it on them. Don't be like, Hey, Ethan, can you tell so-and-so? Um, but you can be like, Hey, Ethan, I'm trying to communicate to so-and-so. Can you come with me? Can you help me be effective? How can we structure the message? What do you know about her? How? can I reach her transparently? How can I reach her well? So um, approach bosses and don't be, how to overcome the fear of distance, the Zelda approach. That's, if you don't have another idea, read the book and then play some Zelda and don't go alone. Take this with you. Um, All right, uh, Aqua PKZ, I see your question. I know Anil um, quite well, but uh, so I don't know what curious if you coached what that means, um, <clears throat> but um, we'll move on for now. There's another question with a lot of votes. Feel free to keep voting. That way I know what you want me to answer. Jump in, add things. Are there any strategies for manning, managing up with a boss that is too busy to meet or meetings are sporadic and not consistent? Sure. Email, phone, hallways. Um, find, does that boss have an assistant? Find out how to catch their time. Find out their favorite communication. Some people like a text. Some people like email. Put a note under their door. Figure out what works for them. What is their communication style? Offer to walk with them somewhere. Offer, um, find out what works and then offer to do that thing. So catch them in the hallway and say, can I walk with you and talk while we go? Or, hey, if I came in early, could you make extra time for me? Or could I have a call with you when you're in the car on the way home? Um, most specifically, though, if I couldn't find out from an assistant or peer what works, I would ask them in a simple one-liner, I need to cover an issue with you. What is the most convenient way for me to do that that works for you? And then I would do that thing. If I pulled my trick and asked the managers in chat again, how many people ask them what communication style works for them, they're all going to answer none. Okay. Uh, this is not tricky. Uh, I suck at this, by the way. I jump to conclusions and tell. If you want to lead well or be effective, get good at asking questions. Most people have trouble jumping down your throat. If you ask a boss in a one-liner, hey, I need to chat with you or I need to discuss something. What's the best way to do that that works for you? They're not going to be like, nothing, fuck you. How dare you speak to me? And if they are, you know what to do. What do you do, chat? Help me out. If you get that response from a boss, what do you do? That's right. GTFO. <laughs> that is exactly right. 
Yeah, F off is another response, but yes, get out. Get out. If you get if you get that kind of response, yeah, you can also ask them these nuts. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, you ask them if they're okay, but if if someone really reacted like that, you got to get out. Very few people will do it though. And if they do, you know, you just say, "Oh, so sorry." And then you go look for another job. Um so all right, cool. That was easy. Um, and if uh, that didn't answer for you, sorry, but yeah, that was easy. Okay. Um, next question. How would you handle the yearly review meeting with your boss when he gave you a bad grade, when he told you a month ago, a uh, month prior, only good things, and even talked to give you a big promotion in the upcoming years if you continued working like you did? So... Um, Look, uh, a boss who does that isn't doing well. The first thing you have to ask yourself is, did you shit the bed really badly? Did you screw something catastrophically up in the last month? Assuming you didn't, um, then they did a bad job. Now, if you had a huge disaster in the last month, then that may be on you. Um, but how would you handle the yearly review meeting? First, never go into your review blind. Always ahead of your review, ask several months ahead. My review is important to me. I want to perform well. If you had to rate me today, how would you rate me? What can I do to improve that? So then you have them on the spot. The second thing, though, is you've told them you care about your review. So what normally happens here is your boss decided to rate someone else above you. Yeah. So what Just Banter says, any good boss, there should be no surprises in a review. So like it's review season at our jo at my job, and I've already had review conversations over the past months with all kinds of people at my who report to me, right? I've already told them my opinion of how they should be rated um, and why. And I've had that conversation and given them the feedback. Um, now, I'm comfortable with difficult conversations usually. So, um, yeah, and it says any promise, uh, Kappa Mango says any uh, promise not in writing is not a promise. Get everything in writing. Well, that's tough sometimes. But you can do that. You can follow up with your boss. If you feel worried, you can send them an email um, or whatever. If you use Slack, whatever, and say, I really appreciated our discussion of my performance today. As I understood it, right now you would rate me excellent because ABC. I was really pleased to hear that. If anything changes, please let me know so I can address it. Now, here's the thing. Once you get to the promo or the uh, review meeting and they tell you, oh, I rated you X, Y, Z, it's baked and you're screwed. So by that point, you've been hosed. Um, you can fight it and it can be worth it to be the squeaky wheel and say, you know, this is really not OK with me. We had a discussion where you told me I was doing great. I'd like to know specifically what changed. I want to be honest here um, and say, look, uh, you want to make it painful to rate you badly. Now, this assumes you're doing good work, but you uh, the truth is a lot of companies have quota systems and somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. And you want to make it a little bit painful. You don't have to do very much here, by the way. A little bit painful. So that when the boss is thinking, who do I put in the better bucket? And who do I put in the mediocre bucket? Whatever those are called at your workplace. They think twice about putting you in the mediocre bucket because they know you're going to challenge them on it. Um. This is a dangerous strategy, and it takes being a little bit comfortable with confrontation or at least conflict or being assertive even. But 
having them think twice about, hey, I know I'm going to have to explain this. At least make sure that if uh, they tell you, yeah, I rated you poorly and here's why, they're ready to tell you why. Um, and they thought about it. Um, and just banter, whatever it is, uh, you can slice it any way you want about companies that do or don't do stack ranking. I think they all do it somewhere on, you know, in the, in the back end, right? When it comes to handing out money, money doesn't get handed out equally. And so they may call it whatever you want, but it's there. Um, and, you know, I'm sure there are some companies that don't do that. The trick is if those companies don't really have differentiation and everybody's the same, then it's going to be, how are you going to distinguish yourself there? So perpetual white belt. Good to see you. I'm glad you caught a live stream. All right. This is going well. Let's, let's kill it here. Put some more questions in, vote them up. We will do the question of the week in the, in a minute. Um, certainly some of the fangs still stack rank, whatever it is they say. Um, you know, your company, yeah, they can determine it, but remember they did the review in their mind and they did the ranking in their mind. Yeah. They may not have written it down and they may hide it from you and give you some nice pablum bosses are paid to make decisions about who to invest in and who to let leave. These are facts, right? And they make them all the time. It's just a question of whether or not the system is transparent. Bosses are always doing an evaluation. Who is most valuable on my team? How do I reward them? And the other people, it's okay, but I, I don't have time for them. I hope they do okay. It's fact. And, um, you know, uh, whether or not they're honest about it, it's a different thing. Bootstraps, are you getting fired then? I don't know. You tell us. Are you getting fired? What have you done that would lead to that? Um, <clears throat> yeah, 40 pink dragons experience is common, right? Uh, some people do it uh, openly. Some people do it covertly. But ranking, it happens. There are better and worse systems, but they're there. All right. How do you deal with a consistently rude and difficult superior? This is a super tough question that I somewhat addressed earlier. Um, but we're going to jump on it now and see if we can help with this. And you see me doing the head rub because that's my sign of frustration and thinking. Like, what the hell am I going to say here? Uh, first thing is understand their style. Why? are they? Is there anyone that they are not rude to? Yeah, the short answer is switch teams, right? If you have a consistently rude and difficult superior. But make sure that's why. Speaking as a manager, uh, particularly one at a high-pressure workplace, right? A demanding workplace, nicer word, high pressure, high expectations. Managers have their own career that they're also trying, and they have their own manager. They're under tons of pressure. They're just as worried as you are about their performance, their review, and their job. They may not be rude and difficult on purpose. They may be rude and difficult in your perception because they have a different style than you and because they're in um, a hurry or they don't have a... Uh, oh, thank you for the tier one sub gift to uh, Duke of Thought. That was nice of you, Adam. Um, so thank you very much. And Duke of Thought is a longtime uh, follower and participant in our Discord, uh, which you should all join. He talks with us there almost every day, as do many others, and we have a good channel where the community gives advice on problems like this. Um, so look, uh, the point is figure out why you think they're rude and see if anyone else has a different experience or a different perspective. Um, I can bring up the Discord link here. So there we go. All right, join the Discord. 
Um, we have over 500 members in that Discord. So it's a very active community, lots of people. You'll get all the notifications of um, what's going on um, and all our upcoming streams, including the crossover streams we do with Devin and the Nash Nation. And we'll talk about those in a few minutes. So the bottom line is try and figure out why you think they're rude. Oh, video villain. Hey, thank you for gifting the five tier one subs. That is awesome. Thank you very much. And congratulations to all the people who got them. It's fun to see the algorithm I helped design for giving out subs uh, happen in live time and see if it hits all the right people. So. All right. You're awesome. Thank you. Um, so how do you deal with consistently rude? In the end, if they're rude uh, with no reason, then you have to get out. Um, if they're rude and it's a it's a constant imposition on you. But the first thing, like I said, is try and figure out uh, their style. BVTV, yes, I was an engineer in my early career. That's what I did. I come from a technical background, uh, computer science, computer engineering, and robotics. Um, all right. Um, how do you manage your direct manager with your skip level if your manager isn't doing well? Uh, this is very difficult. Um, and so uh, we'll, we'll stick that question to the top here in a second. Um, but uh, the next question is, um, how do you manage your direct manager uh, with your skip level if your manager isn't doing well? And the answer to that is that's really tough. Um, but you have to have a private conversation with your skip level, express your concerns, and be patient. So if I'm managing someone who's flawed, if I have a manager who has problems, I can never acknowledge to you that I'm, yeah, skip level refers to your boss's boss. That's right professor um i can never acknowledge to you that the manager i have working for me is struggling i can't say that it's private and i can't undermine them so understand when you go to your skip level if your skip level is any good what he or she is going to say is oh tell me about it uh-huh uh-huh okay well that that does sound difficult what have you done what feedback have you offered what have you tried and they're not trying to put the problem back on you they're trying to understand what have you tried? Um, and yeah, Racine says you can't win by going to the skip level. That's generally true. You're not going to win anything. You have to carefully judge if your skip level really likes that manager, it's not going to happen. Um, but if you have a skip level who seems very discerning and may not see the problem, I have definitely seen employee feedback lead to a manager being removed. Um, so you can earn protection. Think Banhammer looking at this uh, very directly. Um, that's so funny. So the, the point is, um, why would the skip level trust you over the manager though? Good skip levels are always listening to employee feedback because we've learned that people, this is a show about managing up. What we've learned is some people are way better at managing up than managing down. So senior people have learned that some managers show one face to us. We talked about it earlier, they're suck ups. And so remember, managers may not detect. Kristen uh, apparently is very sensitive and said suck ups to her are transparent and she can tell they don't seem authentic. But some of us get suckered in. And so we think this person is terrific because they're doing everything we're asking. Meanwhile, they're doing it by flaying it out of your raw corpses. And we don't see it because we're getting the results we want. And no one has come to us and said, particularly this happens in remote situations. So I have a manager in Timbuktu and I see them twice a year, but I'm getting all the results. I don't know that they're doing it out of your dead bodies, that they're slowly sucking the souls out of you. I should, maybe. You can fault me, but I don't mind being told. Um, so 
bottom line is uh, you don't want to go to the skip level, though, if they obviously and blatantly favor that manager. Um, and let me talk about something I've seen, uh, which is a little bit odd. I call it stacked flaws. Um, stacked flaws. So the reason um, this is a problem is managers like everyone else tend to value their own traits and so they can hire mini me and so it's i can tend to hire myself so i'm a very direct driven outspoken person i may hire another direct driven outspoken person to work for me now ideally i'm trying to hire a diverse team with different styles to complement me but not everyone does that and so if i hire mini me and then you come and complain about the things in mini me that are just like me, I'm not likely to see them as flaws. So if you come and say, you know, mini me speaks to me very directly. He's always just telling me what to do. And when I try and bring him a big report of data, he flips through it and quickly jumps to a conclusion. I might say, huh, that's exactly what I would do and give him a pass. So you have to recognize if, the report is a clone of the boss going and complaining to them about the same thing the, the skip level does isn't going to work. So, yeah, so Racine is a little, uh, I would say, jaded here because she's had some problems with managers and skip levels. Um, she's not wrong, but there are managers who will be like, well, here, let me think this through. If you, the person complaining, quits. That's my manager's problem. And he or she always gets me results. Whereas if I take action on the manager, it's my problem. Hmm. Yeah, you quitting is no skin off my nose. F off. But then you know, and it's time to get out. Good managers, though, know that those people are damaging their team. And to be honest, like, let's talk about it. I've moved out all kinds of, um, I've gone over all kinds of people's, uh, I've removed all kinds of managers. So, Art of Beer, I see your thing. What I normally do is I speed answer questions at the end. So, I will get to that. But you got to stay to the end, and then I go through them as fast as I can. So now you've trapped yourself. You have a sub. I've told you how to get your answer. We'll get there. All right. Uh, but we will go to the next question now. So um, what's the drink? Oh, you're coming in late there, Pilium. The drink is uh, pineapple bourbon lemonade, which is also the recipe. Uh, any recommendations for managing up with a boss that is in a different office or location than you? Uh, you rarely them in person, which I assume is see them in person. Uh, sure. Um, this is hard. Remote management is hard. Number one, travel as much as you can, at least at first. Number two, if they're coming into town, ask for time with them. Why? You just said you see them rarely. Well, when you do have the chance to see them, make the most of it. Try to build the relationship. Number two, use video. Video is better than phone. Uh, video conference gives you much more nuance. Uh, number three, this is great. I can just list these off. You wanted a fast answer, Art of Beer? Here it is. Um, number three, find out what their communication style is. So same question, only more important. Ask them and say, hey, I know we're remote. What works best for you with remote communication? How can I best interface with you? What works best across the distance? What helps you the most? Ask, ask some of their peers, ask other reports, ask other remote people. Everyone has a style that makes them comfortable. This is literally just like detective work. Go figure out what unlocks getting those people to listen and then uh, go ask them, go do it. So <clears throat> um, that's all you need to do. All you need to do, more list. Um, Document it. Send email. Uh, what else remotely? Ask them what they don't need. Turn the question around and say, hey, I know you're remote. I know communication across distance is harder. What, what sort of stuff don't you need to hear about so that I can just deliver it? But the basic thing is, 
you have to do all the same things and understand that communication is harder. And so it's going to take more effort. One of the things that's sad about this stream, and I don't know how to solve this for you, is I can help you be successful. I can probably help you make more money. Um, I can help you understand what's happening to you at work. I can't make it easier in the sense of if you want to be great, it's almost always the answer to a problem you're having at work is going to be more effort. All right, sweet. Um, yeah, Hephaestus, as always, his whole team's remote, I think. That's like meditation. All right. Um, next question. Would you say managing up depends if you're trying to do, um, if you're trying to do so with a middle manager versus an executive? If so, what do we need to know as middle managers working with VPs? More is expected of you. If you're a middle manager, right? Like I expect the people under me to be professionals and to be good at most things. Because you're already a manager. You've already, like, you know what you need. You've already done your job some. So my expectations are higher, right? My expectations are that you're going to be, uh, already know what to do and that you're going to be good at it and quick. And if something goes wrong, you're not going to stew on it, whine and get cranky. You're just going to call it out and ask. So yeah, the higher up you are, I used to say, um, uh, as a vice president, it's a blessing and a kindness if someone bothers to tell you your performance isn't perfect before they just fire you. And if I said that about a line employee, a new person, you'd be like, that's harsh. Like you don't even have to tell them. The fact is at my level, I'm expected to magically figure out what good performance is, deliver it all the time. And if I don't, they can throw my ass out the door anytime they want. That's at will employment at an executive level. So as a middle manager, that's a little bit harsh, but your leader isn't going to spend a lot of time necessarily mollycoddling you about how to do better. They're going to give you a little feedback and see if you recognize, oh shit, I need to change and you get airborne and start making changes. That sounds harsh, but your peers are doing that. And so when I have a I don't know, like the executive world can be harsh. It's it's you're running big groups. You know, my group spends tens of millions of dollars a year, actually more than that. We bring in that much like when you're playing with big budgets. And, you know, when I was at Twitch, uh, the revenue I generated while I was at Twitch was in the hundreds of millions of dollars. So a few percentage points, is a lot of damn money. And the managers under me, the, the leaders under me, were also responsible for budgets in the hundreds of millions of dollars. I can't afford to wait for them to figure it out. And so a warning or two or a hint or two, and then show me something. Now, I try and coach better than that, right? I pride myself I do this channel because I try and coach people. But you wanted the honest answer, there it is. So before we go to the next question, we have to do question of the week. And for those of you who are new and don't know how we do question of the week, it's a total topic change. It's a break from our normal topic. And question of the week is drawn from Arthur Aaron's 36 questions that build relationship. And we've been doing it for over 20 weeks. We've done it consecutively on the channel. And this week's question is gonna be our hardest yet. And the reason is, it's really intended for one-on-one face-to-face -on -one -face interaction. So Arthur Aaron has these 36 questions that build relationship. By the way, you can use these with your boss. They work great, right? Learning, the idea behind Arthur Aaron's questions is that if you are transparent and share something of yourself with someone else, they will usually share back. So these 36 questions go from very comfortable and very general to very specific, but they do assume that two people are talking to each other. So normally that doesn't matter on our channel, but it's going to be a little bit harder this time because the question of the week says, and I'm quoting it in its entire entirety, 
alternate sharing something you consider to be a positive characteristic of your partner, the person you're talking with, share a total of five items. So I give one, the person I'm talking to gives one, and back and forth. Well, that's hard to do here in chat, but every week we sound off in chat. So for chat, you can either give characteristics of me or of the community. Since I'm not going to call out individuals, I'm going to talk about five things I consider to be positive characteristics of this community. Uh, the first thing is it's got a lot of regulars. There's a lot of people who come here every week or nearly, nearly every week and they contribute and they add to the discussion and they help make sure we all get good answers to the questions that are asked. So I appreciate the regulars who come every week. And I think the fact they contribute is a positive. Um, what was the question again? Share something you consider to be a positive characteristic of your partner. So in this case, that's of me or of the community of the channel. Um, Atomics Nation, thank you, by the way. Um, Paintbrush Hero, thank you. Uh, by the way, um, some people say uh, I need to do a show on time management. And so I am going to do a future show on time management because people are surprised that I'm able to put the time into the channel and into Discord. And so I'll do a little show on how I do time management. Um, <laughs> your experience is priceless and you're just flinging it out onto the internet. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Professor. Um, I do want to share it to try and help people. Um, I have been very lucky and I want to do that. So I want to talk about the community some more, though, before I get into reading more of them. Um, I appreciate how this community has basically no trolls. The number of times we have to ban a jackass and ex escort them out is less than once a show. And given Twitch's horrible reputation more generally, it's, f it's phenomenal. You as a team are phenomenal. The number of volunteers from the community that help, you're awesome in that way. Um, so thank you for all the help and contribution you make. The patience you have for the fact that Twitch is not my native environment, that I understand that you helped me learn how to stream well and I'm still working on it. That was the comment earlier about BTTV, which I still, I'm being lazy about at this point, but I will get around to enabling. I appreciate the comment. Um, huh, people are afraid of a lifetime ban. Not really. I mean, I, you know, for the same reason this isn't a verified channel and it's not a partnered channel, I don't abuse my relationship with Twitch. Um, we ban people occasionally from this channel, but I've never tried to get someone banned more generally. Um, so uh, I need one more total of five items. The last thing I like is everyone here has fun. Like you participate in things like this and you join in and you have fun with it. In the end, yeah, we all want to get better at our careers, but if we don't have fun, then it's, uh, you know, it's just not interesting. Like, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't put in the work I do and spend the time in Discord if I didn't like all of you. So thank you all for that. You make this worth the time. Um, and it's it's actually a joy to do this. Sometimes I get tired. And sure, there are times where I'm like, oh, shit, another show. But normally, I'm super happy about it. Um, Hephaestus, that's great. I do try and give actionable advice that you can put in place right away. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have been called an email beast a few times. Uh, my, my rate of responding to emails scares a lot of people. Um, thank you, Unhappy Taco. All right, so thank you all uh, for the things you've shared about me. We'll go back and answer a few more questions. And then we want to talk about next week's shows, though. So I already talked about, um, we're going to do Twitch pitch. Uh, I talked about it when Devin got here, but I know the audience and a lot of it turns over. The cocktails do help. So if you want to sign up for Twitch pitch, um, which I'll show on screen real quick again, next Tuesday, Devin and I are going to team up 
to do Twitch Pitch on his channel where we're going to give you feedback on ideas. And look, the reason you want to come to that show is even if you don't have an idea you want to pitch, you get to see other people pitch their ideas. They're going to get feedback on what they pitch and they're going to get feedback on how they pitch. And you will see A, that it's not scary, B, that we're really helpful and C, that it's fun and you can learn because everyone needs to pitch something to someone eventually. Okay, there's a lot of different things you can need to pitch. This is a huge opportunity. So get after it. Get in there and pitch something. Or just come watch and have fun because this is the truth. We're going to invite chat to sound off on every aspect of the pitch. Hopefully you'll be nice. You'll represent our community here well. But you can help people because the people who do their pitches can go back to the chat and see hundreds of comments on their idea. And they'll probably even find some teammates and whatever uh, who will help them out. And who knows, they might even find an oiler or uh, someone with a ton of money who will fund their idea. All right, so sweet. That's Twitch Pitch. You can go look up the document, find out all about it. Uh, two more shows to talk about. This Thursday, I'll actually have Devin on. We're going to do a show on... Um, the Amazon student programs channel, which I don't think I have the link here, but it's uh, the channel is Amazon student programs. And we're going to do um, we're going to be talking to. So that's the channel we're going to be talking um, to Carnegie Mellon students. That's the point of the stream. But we're going to be showing video character art, concept art, etc. from the new Amazon game coming out later this year. New World. And this is a game that's been in development um, for quite a long time at Amazon. It's the game I've always personally been most excited about because it's my style game. Everyone here knows I don't actually play very many games because I don't have time. But it's my style game. It's a big open world exploration game. So um, the point of the show won't be to convince you to try out the game. Although, Nutsack, I'm glad you, you want to try it. Um, Instead, we're going to be talking about the jobs and the type of work it took to make it. But if you want to see the art, you want to see what we're doing, you want to see part of the rest of my day job, uh, come see that on the Amazon Student Programs channel. It will be at 3 p.m. Pacific time Thursday. So um, is Ethan going to stream himself and play it? We're not going to do a live playthrough on the stream. Um, but I can do that later sometime. That would be fun. I have actually played that game. Some of the combat in the game was built by the Killer Instinct team. We bought a studio called um, Double Helix a few years ago. And so uh, it's the Killer Instinct team that actually built the combat. So it's got pretty good uh, melee fighter style combat, even though um, that's not the genre. Uh, so there's a lot of fun in it. So, And that's a game, I admit, unlike where I don't cheat with uh, Twitch and I earn my stripes, I might have to figure out the cheat codes if I'm going to play the game um, or at least get the really good armor and the really good weapons. Yeah, a lot of the game was built by the old Double Helix crew. So that should be cool. Um. Uh, they're good people. All right. Um, and then the last uh, thing is, when will I be back? I'm going to be back Sunday at 6. Um, so I've been doing a lot of Sunday streams. I'll be doing it from uh, Awesome Dave's studio. Um, so that's where I'm up on stage. And I've got the nice uh, cocktail table and the nice cocktail. So, yeah, the VP DLC pack. That's exactly right. It's the VP special armor. Maybe I'll get them to do armor with a big VP on it. That would be kind of funny, like an inside joke or maybe an EE. Um, wonder what that would take. Uh, all right. Um, I will be back Sunday at 6 p.m. The next show is pausing and pacing your career. So it's about understanding your career has a pacing to it. When to push, when to relax, when to work hard, when to chill out. We're going to talk about how to pace your career. So with that, um, I'm going to jump back, answer a few more questions. I hope you voted on them because I get cranky when there's no questions with good votes and we end early. Um, all right. Never relax. 
All right. Okay. Um, so the next question is, how would you handle the constant passing of the hot potato due to incompetencies? Those who promoted because they are good speakers, but bad at administrative actual work, for example. So if you've never heard of this idea, there's an idea called the Peter Principle. And the Peter Principle says, um, the Peter Principle says uh, that um, someone gets promoted to the level of their own incompetence. And in fact, this makes sense, right? People get promoted up the stack until they're no longer good at it because they're really good at something. And so we assume they can do the next thing and they get promoted and they're really good at that and they get promoted and they're really good at that and they get promoted and they're not so good at that and they stall, but they're not so good at it. So this is normal, sadly. And the reason that Peter Principle exists is because it happens. Because here's someone who's good. They move up. They're good. They move up. They're good. They move up. They suck. Or they're not as good. You have to have some... Uh, it depends on whether or not they're learning and how bad they are. But in this case, how would you handle the constant passing of the hot potato due to incompetencies? Well, that's pretty harsh. Um, but what I would do is call out it's a hot potato. So I wouldn't make it about the incompetencies. I would ask, hey, this problem, it's been moved around a few times. Do we all agree it's a problem? Do we agree it needs to get resolved? Um, so we'll bring the margaritas back. We're definitely going to do a margarita stream at some point. I just, I didn't know Dave's recipe when he made those margaritas. And I, I drink quickly normally. Um, and those two things turned out to be a problem. All right. Do people really get into a position based on what they think they do rather than their track record? Not always. They get in based on their track record. But the point is their track record at one level doesn't mean they're going to be good at the next level. And so the Peter Principle says promoted to the level of their own incompetence. And if you just think it through logically, that's where you end up. Is it mandatory to be a big drinker as a VP? Actually, Dave, yeah, Dave made the margaritas. Um, no, and I don't actually, this channel, you'll never believe me and that's fine. I drink very rarely. Um, I like to drink. I'm not against drinking, but I grew up in a house that was nearly dry. My parents drank for New Year's Eve, and that was it. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, Dave Dave likes a, a good solid drink, no question. Um, so, uh, I think I've answered the question. We'll move on. And as for how much I drink, I just thought this channel needs some rituals, and it was more fun. Kristen gave me some whiskey, and I wanted to showcase it. It's more fun to have a drink on stream. It makes me feel more like I'm hanging out with you and that this isn't really work. So, Vic Trees, uh, you're very welcome for the content. My mom's spirit animal is a college kid. Snoopscape, you got to explain that somehow. Oh, maybe she drinks like a college kid? So, All right. That uh, question had a lot of votes. We're going to go on to the next one. Um. And then I hear dinner getting ready, so we're not going to go too further. Yeah, she's a big partier. All right. <laughs> um, we're going to, I promised somebody in chat earlier we'd speed up to make sure we got through stuff. So let's do these now in speed mode. When looking for a new job, how do you find a good manager that you can manage up? Get references, network, ask about them. Um, even if you don't have a network beforehand, Get the identities of your other interviewers, call them up or contact them and say, hey, I have a certain style. What can you tell me about your boss's style? Uh, what can you tell me about the manager's style? Find out. The only way to do this is personal reference. You can also ask the question, um, what makes the best sort of employee for you? I do, you know, I said no one asked me at work how to work for me well. People do ask in interviews, what is your style? What sort of style works for you? And I tell them. So ask the question, hey, I want to be a good match for you. 
what's your style? What sort of behaviors work for you? And do you have any pet peeves? And see what they say. And by the way, if you're interviewing somewhere and they're not giving you a chance to ask questions, that's a warning sign. We reserve time in every interview for questions. So honestly, I never thought of pulling references on your bosses. Well, there you go, Nutsack. I just paid for your stream. Uh, why would you not ask? Um, why would you not uh, ask? That's like the most important reference you could do. An Elfin Plate, good to see you here tonight. An Elfin Plate uh, works is a longtime friend of mine uh, and works at Amazon. Uh, but yeah, if you want to, um, <clears throat> if you want to know about your boss, pull their references. Absolutely. And if your boss is afraid of their references or they're hard to find, like why is that? Um, yeah, totally. Okay, we're gonna move on. Uh, when looking for a new job, how do you find? Uh, Oh, we just did that one. How do you find a good manager you can manage up? So maybe I confused questions in different orders, but same thing, references. Try to never go into a job blind. Always network in, ask people. Ethan, as an employee, should I strive to be someone who can do good work uh, or known as a good person? Is it an even split? Um, I, You know, why does this have to be an or? Uh, King Falcon, thank you for the sub, by the way, and for subbing for four consecutive months. Very much appreciated. Uh, you don't choose to chat much, which is totally fine. If you want to lurk and sub, that is okay. If you just want to lurk, listen, and learn, that's okay, too. We do appreciate people who chat, though, um, just because it adds to the learning in the channel. So if you ever have anything to share, jump in. So why does this have to be a choice? Can you not be both? Um, however... I would say in the end, you're paid for your work. So if you can do good work and not be known as an evil jerk, do that. Um, now, there'll be people, I suspect Kristen or others. Oh, it's tough with the wrench badge. Yeah, I get that. You don't, you don't want to be, you don't want to seem like you're waving the wrench around. But there's a bunch of wrenches here, so it's all good. Um, still, uh, I get it. Uh, that's why when I join in, I don't have the wrench on this account. I use a different one for staff. All right, coming back to this. Um, as an employee, there'll be people who say it's more important to be a good person. But if it's a binary choice and you're a good person who does crappy work, all you are is hard for me to fire because people like you. And now I'm going to have to take the hit because your work isn't good. So I have to fire you because you're not doing good work. But now you're well liked, so I'm going to take shit for it. So I'm doubly unhappy. So thank you. Um, but I will still do it because I'm here to I, I wish you were. I like that you're a good person, but we pay for work. We don't pay for your morals. Um, now. Again, this shouldn't be either or. So we're going to move on. Um, uh, how do I continuously keep growing in my job? Oh, my God. Wrong, wrong stream for that. Uh, we have a million answers to this, but since I love to recite it and I have it down by memory, we'll do one more clippable version of the magic loop. So here's the magic loop. You want to grow in your job. Step one, do the job you have well. Step two, ask your boss, is there any way I can help you? What's on your mind? What more do you need? Step three, when they tell you something, do it, do it well. Step four, go back to them and say, hey, I'd really like to learn or grow. I really love doing that thing for you. Is there something I could do for you in this area that I'm interested in or in that area that would challenge me? Is there a way you can stretch me and help me learn and grow? Step five, when they tell you that, do that thing. Do that magic loop of five things. You will immediately grow in your career and you'll probably end up oiler rich and then you can come here and give away subs and you can start your own channel helping other people like i do you will be a rock star in your career five simple steps the magic loop go do them all right sweet um next question seems like very similar how do you keep growing in your career how to keep getting next level of responsibility do i need to switch teams continuously I just answered this. No, you do not need to switch teams unless you have a bad boss or unless you stop learning. If you're really doing great work 
and your boss can't get you anything else that's a challenge or new for you, then yeah, you might have to change teams to a new challenge. But uh, that's all you need to do. So I just answered this, done. We're banging through the questions now. What if your boss is self-aware um, and you have to clean up their mess consistently? Uh, well, um, always look at yourself first. I covered this book earlier. I'll bring it up again. People like to send me these. What if my boss is a dick because I'm so fucking amazing and I've never done anything wrong and I work all the time really hard and I'm God's gift to my company? <sighs> look at yourself, okay? And I look at myself. I am a huge fuck up. I share on this channel. I got my ass fired twice, laid off early in my career for having a big loud mouth and not having enough business sense. And I got myself run out of two jobs. So the first thing I would say to you is read this book, Leadership and Self-Deception, and learn how much you suck. And accept you are a flawed human being who does half-ass work a lot of the time. Now, you may also have this boss who's a huge dick, okay, or who isn't self-aware or whatever. But look at yourself first. Why? Because you can only improve you. You're the only person you can improve. Make yourself better and learn about yourself. Then, if you have a boss who isn't self-aware and you have to clean up their mess, clean up the mess and get really good at it. Be the person who jumps in and is super ass helpful and see if they change. Then, see if you can earn enough of their trust to talk to them and say, hey, you know, you keep making a huge mess. Cosmic Firestorm, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. Yeah, you've, you guys have got me on another rant. Okay, the fact is, we all like to think we're perfect. I talk about how we all like to be the hero of our own narratives. We're mostly self-centered, myopic, uh, worried about ourselves, busy breaking our arms, patting ourselves on the back, and we think we're perfect, and we have so much to learn. You don't think I have stuff to learn? Go watch the two streams I did with Dr. K, right? I am a fucked up mess just like you. We all are. We're doing our best. Your boss who's making messes is a fucked up mess also. Okay, you can go learn to be better though. To be better than that. And then if after you really put in work, um, after you put in work to make yourself as good as you can be, um, then if they if you can't earn their trust and come in and get them to see that they're making life hard for their employees, then that's the time because you're now great. You've worked on yourself. Go somewhere else. I say go somewhere else all the time, but you don't need to do that that often. But if it happens, yeah, move with pride. The world is a big place and life is short. Go work at something you love. All right, that was fun. The more I learn, the more I learn how much I don't know. Thank you, Pilium2. You are so right. Striker6, how much does your shirt cost? Uh, it's probably about 100 bucks. Got to look sharp. Um, but, you know, I wear hoodies to work. I wear this for you. These sit in my closet and rot because Amazon's not that uptight. I wear the shirts for this stream because I want to be, if I'm going to talk about a professional career here, I feel like I should be professional. Yeah, 50 bucks. Pink Dragon's. Got it right. Okay, moving on. What are your thoughts on building personal relationship with the boss and skip level? Do it if you can. Personal relationship is incredibly powerful. It doesn't mean you suck up or be dishonest, but if you can build a personal relationship to have that trust, it's absolutely more powerful. So you said your thoughts on it? Do it. How to do it? Authentic. Don't lie. Some people, you're never going to be their friends. That's the way it is, but you should try. If you can't be a friend, at least be friendly. Um, okay, moving on. This could be a whole stream for later, but what tips do you have for moving up in a company? Huh, I love this. Magic loop. See previous rant. Um, so we're done with that one. I'm a part of the monthly meeting with my company CEO, co-founder, and VP of people. What's the best way to nurture this relationship and prove my usefulness? Planning to apply for a promotion soon. Add to the meeting, prepare in advance, 
ask them how you can help. Um, read the meeting, volunteer for things in the meeting that need to be done, but then do them. Um, don't just talk to hear the sound of your own voice, though. Be crisp. And if you have something to say, say it, but be organized and be open to other input. But mostly help out. Um, all right, moving on. Do big companies like Amazon try to vary up the manager and boss types so there's a variety or is there just attributes that are really consistent with the LPs, which are our leadership principles? There's no intentional approach to varying. Um, that might be a good idea, but uh, it doesn't happen that I'm aware of. I've never seen it. I should say and I should remind people and, and our loyal mod will point out the stuff I say here is my opinion. When I answer that question about Amazon, I'm not representing Amazon. It's my personal perspective. Well, I've never seen that done. How do you deal with people that really micromanage and feed you little bits of information piecemeal instead of giving you the whole picture from the get-go? Um, understand why they're doing it. They may not be aware. They may think, you know, I'm sparing you all the detail. But then ask them. Say, hey, it would really help me to understand the big picture. Do you think you could share a little more? Um, could you tell me the vision? Uh, and then if that doesn't work, same drill. Like you try everything. You try to be helpful. You try to adapt to their style. And if all of that doesn't work, you get a job with someone whose style you match. But the biggest thing is just to ask. And don't ask in a confrontational way. Don't ask in a way that says, uh, hey, you stupid micromanaging boss, why can't you spit it out? Say, you know, I'd really like to do more. I'm struggling to see the big picture so that I can do more independently without bothering you. Could you share a little bit more and be honest about it? Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, what are some good ways to ensure your value is being recognized during periods of disruption? Unlike your company being picked up by a new private equity, PE is private equity or CEO changes or both without seeming too pushy and sounding worried. Oh boy. This is a very specific question. And it's like got 50 different degrees in it. Um, do good work. Send quick notes that say, hey, we completed Project X. Or I wanted to let you know we finished Project Report Y. Here's a copy if you have any questions. Basically, send a simple email that highlights what got done and invite questions. And then move on. And don't make it like, hey... So I know you're new here, but I just completed this really hard project and I wanted to make sure you saw it. Okay, that, that becomes very office space. Um, all right, uh, we're cruising. How do you build a good relationship with your skip level manager? It's hard, show them value. But very rarely do people ask me for time as a skip level. And then when they do ask and I tell them I have limited time or I need a topic, they don't have one. So go to the skip level and say, hey, I'd like to get five minutes with you. Um, and then you tell them what you want to do and you ask how you can follow up with them. Say, look, I know you're super busy. I'd like to have limited appropriate contact. What is the best way to do that? Yeah, Pink Dragon says reach out. She's better at answering quickly than I am. That's your two word answer. Reach out. Um, Ethan, I went and watched several book summaries for leadership and self-deception. I don't fully get what the main takeaway is supposed to be. What would you say are some key takeaways? <sighs> um, read the whole book. <laughs> That's the key takeaway because it's a great book and there's a lot of people in chat who can testify to it. However, the key takeaway is this. We treat other people as obstacles to our goals, not as humans. So... We start treating them as what? Um, what's an example? Uh, I need to get something done and I'm dependent on a designer to complete the design and the design's not done. I can either understand that the designer is a person with a lot of concerns and, and problems of their own or um, I can just go to them and say, where the hell is my design? Or I can passively aggressively and seem really nice and say, so Rick, um, I was just following up on the design. Uh, it was due yesterday. And I was wondering, because it's really important for Project Foo, 
when you were going to be able to get to it. But if what's coming through your vibe is, Rick, you fuck, you're late. Rick's going to know. However, if you say, Rick, as you know, uh, this design is really important. I know that you know it's important. So uh, what's what? Uh, what can I expect? And is there something holding you up I can help with? Because I know you're doing your best and I just want to make sure, is there a way, is there anything you need in order to deliver it? Um, so, all right, cool. Uh, yeah, Farm SJ says, we don't put ourselves in their shoes. We just complain they don't make us our number one priority. That is exactly right. That's the summary of the book. Moving on. I work minimum wage jobs. Your socks cost more than my monthly salary. Do these tips apply to me? Yes. You still have a boss. You still want to get better. You want to get out of that minimum wage job so that you can have really expensive socks. By the way, it turns out my socks are atrociously cheap. They go inside of shoes. Who cares? Okay. But that's been answered. What are some good ways to build rapport with your boss? Yes. Coffee, lunch, drinks. Any of those are great. Find out what your boss likes. Ask when they have a few spare minutes that you could catch them. Ask if they like any of those things. Basically, make contact be a human. Huh, plug for Amazon basic socks. That is so true. Yeah, so one of our core principles is frugality. I'm not going to spend a lot on socks. Um, funny story. When I got married, my wife bought several pairs of fairly colorful socks for me. And one of her comments when she gave me one of the pairs was, I know this is going to be a challenge for you. And it was. All right. Um, so we're, we've run through most of the questions. How do you get your manager out of the mindset? If I don't have time to invest in you, you bring them value. Um, in other words, why, uh, I'm busy 50, 60 hours a week to invest in you takes my time. You'd like me to do it. Theoretically, I should do it, but let's get very real here. Every hour I invest in you is an hour I don't spend with my family. How am I going to get paid for doing that? Okay. I'm already investing in all my direct reports. I'm investing in all the people on Twitch. How am I going to get paid for investing in you? Bring me something of value. So I invest in people as they earn it. Come to me and say, look, I'd really like you to invest in me. What can I do to merit that? What hard project do you have that I could take on or contribute to that would be worth you putting in a little of your time to help me succeed? That question I just gave, go hit the clip button because that's your damned answer right there about how to get that investment. Because again, Hephaestus and all the other people will chime in. Nobody ever does that. Um, investing in me is giving a voice to the world. There you go. Um, some whip. I love it. I'm glad. Uh, all right. Um, as a manager that manages a small team that does contract work for a plant, what's a good way to manage up remotely? We covered that earlier in the stream, so I'm going to move on. Um, uh, could you give a 60-second elevator pitch on why we should bother managing up? Sure. I'd love to, and you can put it on Twitch pitch. Do you have a boss? Does your boss have influence on your life? Would you like him to have a good influence or a bad influence? That's why you should manage up. That didn't take 60 seconds. If you'd like to leave the relationship you have with your boss to total random chance and therefore the quality of your life to random chance, please don't bother. Ignore this stream and go back to what you were doing. Um, yeah, super easy. And if, if you don't care, that's cool. But uh, wow. <laughs> All right. My director wants GPS software put on our tech phones to track them. That's a little scary. How do you handle inflicting something like that on employees when you know they'll hate it, but it's being mandated? Oh boy, I would talk. Uh, that one's too long for end of show, but I would talk to the boss about that. And then I just, I'd try and explain why, and then it's going to happen. And then I might get my resume ready, though. That's some scary shit. Like, that's like, I don't know. I mean, the world sucks. Uh, and that stuff's going to be more common, unfortunately. But that's a get the hell out if you can. I started my position one month ago. Um, I don't want to get underperforming or getting fired for no reason. 
Are there unspoken quotas I need to meet and ensure my safety? I have no idea. There's so much context to that. Um, uh, I'd have to know more. So I'm going to pass and answer the last question. How do you keep focus and make project progress on projects that feel overwhelming? Um, break them down into small parts. Um, reward yourself for each small part you do get some help or consultation ask your manager your boss hey this project seems really big i'm getting a little overwhelmed can you help me understand what's a priority in it or how to break it up in your eyes those are a few things you can do and with that we have done the longest speed marathon auction answering of questions i think i've done we are done shows coming up shows coming up uh, Thursday, Amazon Student Programs channel. We are going to do on Amazon Student Programs, I will be live with Devin Nash. He's going to be my guest with a producer from our new game, New World. We're going to talk to Carnegie Mellon students about working at Amazon making games. So if you want to see the game, you want to hear about what we do, you want to see me and Devin co-stream from within the Amazon hive mind, or you just are bored as shit, it's 3 p.m. Thursday on the Amazon Student Programs. I will announce it in my Discord. Devin will announce it in his. But you should come there and see the cool new game, New World. Um, second, uh, I will be back on Sunday at 6 p.m. talking about pacing your career, how to build it in stages, how to know when to push and when to do more work. We'll take the magic loop, tear it apart, and talk about the speed, when you should be pressing and when not, when it's okay to pause your career, and for how long and why. All right. Um, what else we got? Oh, uh, and then Twitch Pitch. We've talked about it a couple times. We're going to do Twitch Pitch, Devin and I, next Tuesday at 4 p.m. I'll be in Devin's studio. We will start pitching. Um, Chalupa Whale, can I crash the New World Party? Maybe talk to my assistant. Uh, I'm sure you can find her. You're internal. Um, and uh, yeah, you can uh, stand in the background or watch. All right. Um, some whip. Uh, all right. Uh, <clears throat> you can stop adding me there, champ. Like I read the stuff when I can. All right, we're good. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so some whip, if you want to speak, go over to general chat and discord with everybody else and lay off the ads. We don't need them. Okay. So with that, we're good. We're done. It has been killer fun to thank you all for being here. And, uh, <clears throat> it has been, I'll bring up the discord. Uh, you want to join that one? We're done. We're out. I got to go eat dinner. It's late. Thank you very much. Cheers and have a great evening.